And I always watch people's heads turn and they see them and they're like, oh, oh, oh. Or you get the old ones that do the, oh, I don't, I don't want to catch that. That's a stigma, but the stigma's on them. There's nothing wrong with Trey. He's got cerebral palsy. So what? He's brilliant. So God gives and God takes, right? He's, he's only 17, you know. What's he going to do by the time he's 23, 24, you know? And he's not afraid to tell you. He is not afraid to tell you. The Trey Project is this year's FBLM State Project, and it's all about raising awareness for people with disabilities. And our goal is to fundraise for Tools for Life and work with Georgia Tech. And um, I am the liaison between the project and Georgia Tech. FBLA is the largest student organization in the country. Um, we have over 100,000 members nationwide. Uh, this one is in Georgia, and so every single school, all of them who are members of FBLA, will be participating in this project. And so that's possibly over 10,000 people who will be participating. And Cambridge is the only one that has tried. Well, he's Robert E. Quinn III. He is a third generation Irishman out of New York. That's what his father is, but his mother is from here in Alpharetta. So his bloodline runs very deep here in the Alpharetta, now Milton area. Um, Trey was born at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. It was a difficult birth. Uh, it was a normal, a normal, a began a normal delivery, but my wife could not deliver Trey. And what happened was, is they were too slow on the emergency uh, cesarean operation, and that caused the cerebral palsy that he has today. And my wife and I decided we were going to settle here. And back in her old house, uh, we received it from her father-in-law, the house itself. And uh, we gutted the house for a whole year, rebuilt the whole house to be handicap accessible. Knowing Trey, thinking we would have a child that basically wouldn't be able to walk or talk or anything of that nature. Boy, were we surprised. So he, at the age of eight and nine, took to computers. He took to technology very early. Uh, he was actually identified at age six over at Mimosa as being extremely bright and uh, he got invited up to the University of Georgia to a conference where they actually gave him an award because he started work working on computers and IT work at the age of six and seven and by the time he was nine he had an iPad that basically increased his capability so much that he was able to mainstream in elementary school. We kind of made a mistake. We kept him back a year thinking he wasn't developing. Uh, worst mistake we ever made as parents because he blew away third, fourth, and fifth grade with straight A's. And then he went right off to middle school, uh, right after elementary school, and he did the same thing. I think he got one B and it made him mad <laughs> when he was in middle school. And now he's here at Cambridge. He's a 4-0. Uh, you all know what, what he's able to do. He's move on when ready as a junior. I can't keep up with him. I'm his dad, and I'm going to be very honest with you, even though I have a graduate degree, he has surpassed me in math and, and, and sciences easily. He gets so wrapped up in doing schoolwork all the time, now he's got he's to work in, in reference to the, to the club with FBLA, and I think it's great for him with the social connections. Um, even though he's, he's very much in tune with the disabled community, I always thought, ah, they got to hang out with the straights, don't you, in FBLA. And why don't you change their minds? The first time that I met him, I was competing with him, and he was beating me. <laughs> and I, I didn't think that for one second that this kid wasn't smart. He was in my intro to uh, digital tech class, and we started playing Kahoot one day, I remember. and. And there was this one kid who was beating me, and it was Trey. 
and I was looking around, I was like, who's Trey? And I spotted him, and so I walked over to him, and we started competing, and in the end, we tied in our score, and so uh, from there on, we were, we were partners on a bunch of stuff, and we just started to get to know each other much better, and now we're really good friends. And I think that there's no, no better way for me to express my gratitude of having known him than to head this project with him, because I think it's awesome. I think being in his position, I wouldn't be able to deal with the things that he's dealt with, his mother passing away, his uh, just daily, day-to-day -day life is incredibly hard. And an example of the difficulties that he might go through if a student were to mess around with their friends and break the elevator on one side of the building, well, Trey has to use the elevator to get upstairs. So he has to go all the way around to the other side of the building just to get upstairs. And if that one's broken, well, then he has to go outside to just get up a ramp to get to class. And that might be 40 minutes out of his day that he's missing instruction. And that's just at school. And so there's a lot of things that Trey has to go through just to go about a normal life. And he, managed to do, he manages to do all of that with a big smile. And I think that's pretty awesome. I don't know if I would be able to deal with it like he has, but he has grown up with, with a, lot of, a lot of difficulties, and he has been able to deal with it much better than anyone that I could imagine. But they've now named an annual award to his mother at the special needs community. So all what happens is once a, once a year down at St. Simon's Island, they have the Ideas Conference. It's the first week in June, and all the special needs teachers from the whole state there's like 1,200 of them, 13, come in and there's the now the Melinda Quinn Award called the Squeaky Wheel Award because she literally, when it came to bureaucracy, when it came to whatever, she would latch on to you and she was like a squeaky wheel on a, on a shopping cart. You want to get rid of it right off the bat. And so that's, and, and Trey learned from that. He learned a lot in reference to uh, his health care, um, other things that he had to do in the community and basically he was always constantly looking at technology and saying we can use this with that and then when he got hooked up with tools for life they're all engineers georgia tech engineers that are taking off the shelf technology and applying it to special needs to help them every day and now he's part of that at age 18 well he's been part of it now two years he started when he was 15. i think that a lot of people don't understand that trey is really smart and I, they don't understand that trey he, he only has a physical disability, he doesn't have a mental disability. Uh, Trey is incredibly bright, he is well learned, he is well rounded, he is, he's understanding of when people are looking down on him and he doesn't like it. And I don't like it either. And I've seen people talk to him like he's stupid and I've seen people talk to him like he doesn't understand them. When he understands them perfectly and he's much smarter than them. I think that people don't understand how gifted Trey is. He is a smart kid. <laughs> It'll be interesting when they do his life story because he had so many trials and tribulations. Um, times when he came home from school because he always says, the kids are always staring at me and I said, stare back.